Are you in search of a Minecraft resource pack that's got more than just boring swords and axes? If so, my Grimdark Battle Pack is exactly what you're looking for. We've got daggers, and hatchets, and katanas, and greatswords, spears, halberds, and more. I'm Cal, and today I'll be showcasing all of the textures contained within my Grimdark Resource Pack collection available for both the Java Edition and the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. Alright guys, now before I just jump into it, if you're new around here and you'd like to help support this channel as well as the future development of this resource pack, be sure to subscribe. This not only helps me out, but it will also ensure you're among the first to hear about future pack updates. You can also get early access to those future updates and more over at my Patreon page, which I'll have linked below. Okay, so let's cover the basics here, starting with the leather armor and wooden tools. My pack contains custom textures for all of the Minecraft tools, weapons, and armor. But what makes it truly unique are the variant textures that I've created to supplement those default textures. And new to this version, I've now got custom models for some of these items, and we finally got pole arms and other two-ended weapons, thanks to the fact that I finally learned how to use block bench and create those models for those two-handed weapons. All right, so at the top row here, uh, we've got the swords. There's five variants today. That starts with the dagger, uh, there's katanas, great swords, glaives, and spears. Starting on the left side of the second row there are the axes, which include three variants, the hatchet, the battle axe, and the halberd. Uh, moving down to the third row there are the shovels, and there are three variants for the shovels as well, including the spade, pitchfork, and warfork. Now over on the right side are the pickaxes and hoes. Uh, I have two variants for each of those at the current time, although I'd like to add more in the future. But for right now, there's the sledge and the warhammer as variant picks, and then the sickle and scythe as variant hose. Now, all of these variants are functionally identical to the default tools and weapons. As a resource pack, cannot alter the power or effectiveness of these variants on its own. In the future, I may look into creating some sort of companion data pack, uh, but there is actually another creator here on YouTube who has already taken the initiative to create just such a data pack. His name is Funky Talk, and I highly recommend checking out his combat set data pack if that's the sort of thing you're interested in. I will have a link to that below. Of course, I don't just have these variants for the wooden tools and weapons, uh, and here you can see the textures for the rest of the material types. That does it for the weapons and tools. Let's move on to the armor. Each material type has four armor variants. Once again, they are all functionally the same. The light variant doesn't make you quicker. The heavy variant doesn't make you stronger, at least not without the help of a data pack. But what they do allow you to do is customize your look. If you're like me, this is probably something that you've wanted in Minecraft for forever. And it's ultimately what originally inspired me to make a resource pack in the first place. The four armor variants available are the Royal variant over on the left, which consists of a crown for the helmet, a livery collar and cuffs instead of a chest plate, belt for the leggings, and spurs in place of boots. This variant offers the least coverage, and uh, I've found it to be great if you want to show off more of your Minecraft skin. The light variant similarly offers little coverage and is typically composed of eyewear for the head, some pauldrons, and a belt for the chest, hip plates for the leggings, and low-rise shoes instead of boots. My default armor set uh, serves as sort of the medium armor variant, and I drew inspiration from Warhammer Fantasy for some of these. They all offer a bit more coverage with only the arms and face exposed, which is still a bit less covered than vanilla armor offers. The leather and chain head pieces are meant to mimic the appearance of a metal jaw, while iron is inspired by the look of the warrior priest, gold by bright wizards, and then diamond and netherite are adorned with candles like some of the witch hunter designs in Warhammer Fantasy. Finally, we have the heavy variant, which was designed for anyone who wants to cover up their Minecraft skin. You'll still be able to see a little bit of your face and a sliver of your arm, but otherwise this is a full coverage armored appearance. Oh, I almost forgot the turtle shell helmets and shields. The turtle helmets come in four similar variants to the rest of the armor. For the standard, I've used my goggles texture and added a snorkel, and then the heavy is actually inspired by those old school scuba helms. Uh, for the shields, uh, I've got a buckler variant that is great for anyone who wants to just barely see their shield in first person view, and a tower variant for anyone who wants the biggest shield possible. Uh, I haven't figured out how to get the banner designs to work on these variants yet, but it's something I'd like to try and add in the future for you guys. For those of you who are new to the Grim Dark Battle Pack and are playing on the Java edition of Minecraft, here's how you can access the variant textures. First, you'll need to be playing with Optifine and you'll need to have custom items turned on. Then grab the appropriate tool, weapon, or armor piece that you would like to change 
and rename it using an anvil. The name must include the keyword somewhere in the new name. So for a katana, that's katana. For light armor, that's light, and so on. The name must include the keyword somewhere in the new name, but you can place it anywhere. It doesn't have to be in a specific order. Those naming conventions are extremely flexible, so you should still be able to come up with some epic sounding names for your weapons without having to sacrifice the aesthetics of the variant that you like best. But that's not all I've got for you today. While my battle pack is focused primarily on combat items, I've also created custom textures for dozens of other inventory items as well as a fair number of blocks. You can see here I've got custom textures for the non-combat tools as well as the arrows, potions, dyes, some of the food items, and a few more. Then, if you ignore the spruce wood wall in the back, which is, of course, the vanilla texture, the rest of these blocks here in front of me are custom textures as well. I've spruced up a number of the crafting tables, so they appear to be made from spruce. Same with the torches, scaffolding, item frames, and armor stands. Then, because I primarily create medieval and fantasy builds, I've actually gone ahead and done some what I would consider more appropriate styled stained glass textures. Since I typically use white, gray, and black for my builds, like windows in my builds, and the other colors to create that cool sort of fog effect on the ground, I've used slightly different styles of framing for each of them. Uh, and new to this update, all of that glass will now have connected textures when you're using Optifine. You can see I've made a few more edits to block textures here, primarily for consistency, to make the iron bits match the vanilla anvil and cauldron, for example, and then adding spruce anywhere I can. I'm particularly fond of these new bookshelves I put together, which once again now appear to be made from spruce. I don't know if you can tell, but spruce is my favorite wood variant to build with in Minecraft. Now I know not everyone out there is going to love every texture in my pack. And before I made my own resource pack, I was slicing and dicing other people's packs together to make my own remix packs for personal use. So in the name of choice and customization, you will actually have four packs to choose from for the Java edition of Minecraft. The Grimdark Battle Pack is my flagship pack. It contains every texture I've created and shown in this video. All the tools, weapons, armor, variants, along with the elytra, horse armor, custom skybox, and the decorative blocks. Now, if you're loving the tools and weapons, but you aren't too keen on some of the other stuff, the Grimdark Tools Pack contains just the tools, weapons, and custom item textures, along with the variants, of course. Same goes for the armor and apparel. If you're digging the armor but want to ditch the rest, the Grimdark Armor Pack contains just the armor and variants, as well as the elytra and horse armor. Finally, the Grimdark Sky Pack contains just the skybox, sun, and moon textures. Obviously, you can mix and match the tools, weapons, and sky packs, and if you use all three, you basically have the battle pack minus my decorative block textures. This video has been filmed in the Java edition of Minecraft, but I've been able to bring most of these textures over to Bedrock as well. For up until recently, it was not possible to, or at least not easy to add weapon variants in Bedrock. So instead what I've done is create add-on pack. This means that on Bedrock, you can still access the variants, but you do it by stacking another pack on top of the battle pack rather than renaming an item in game. This will be changing in the future as I plan to leverage the new custom item features in Bedrock to put all of the weapon and tool variants in one pack with custom rest. So if you're watching this video later in 2022, there's probably a new video covering that update. But for now, here's how the Bedrock collection works. The Grimdark battle pack is still the flagship. It contains all of my default custom textures, which again includes the tools, weapons, armor, elytra, horse armors, custom skybox, and decorative blocks. Then, similar to my Java packs, I've got a tools pack and an armor pack. These contain just the default tools and items in the tools pack, and just the default armor and apparel in the armor pack. For the tool variants, I've put most of the one-handed tool variants in my variant tools pack, and then put the katanas in their own pack. Unfortunately, I can't scale the large weapons correctly in Bedrock, so I don't yet have a way for you to get some of the variants, like the Greatsword and Halberd or Warhammer. At least not yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. I do, of course, have the Grimdark Sky Pack as well, which again contains just the Sky, Sun, and Moon. And then finally for Bedrock, I have three armor variant packs. One for Light, one for Heavy, and one for Royal. Similar to the variant tools pack that I mentioned earlier, these will replace all of the default armor with the respective variant armor. Much like in the Java edition of my pack, you can mix and match these packs to customize the options you'll have available in Bedrock. I've been using the katanas plus the royal armor on top of my battle pack, so I get the royal armor look with the default weapons except for the sword, which will have the katana appearance. 
And then the rest of the textures come from my battle pack. All right, guys, this is it. This is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for checking out my texture pack. I don't know what you're still doing here. Go download it. It's available on Curse. It's available on Planet Minecraft. You can grab it today for Java and Bedrock. Um, I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Be sure to, you know, give this video an upvote if you're a fan of the pack. And uh, have fun. I'll have another update for you guys again real soon. That's going to do it for me today. Once again, I'm Cal. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.